Everyone, welcome. Today we're going to take a look at gradients and patterns. These are great little tools to use in Illustrator, kind of add a little bit more depth, a little bit more color, kind of more pop to your illustrations. Um, in the lesson today, we're going to take a look at creating and saving gradient fills, applying and editing them on strokes, and then in fill areas. We'll take a look at the difference between them. There's radial gradients, linear gradients, and freeform gradients. We'll take a look at um, what blending is so we can blend shapes. So we can kind of create one thing and kind of blend it into another. And then we'll take a look at something cool. It's called a pattern maker. It's a way that you can kind of create customized patterns and apply them onto your art. So we'll take a look at that as kind of a final step. Everything for today's lesson is going to be available for you on Blackboard. So if you take a look inside weekly assignments and then lesson 11, got all the support stuff for you. So there's additional information on creating patterns, freeform gradients, and the gradient tool. Obviously, everything will be covered in this lesson. These are just kind of single quick hits if you want to see a little bit more on those. And then everything's in these lesson 11 start files. I've got them downloaded and unzipped onto my desktop. And there's two files for this week. This start one, which is we're going we're gonna to kind of do the bulk of our work on. And then this start two, we're going to jump in. We're going to apply a pattern to that. So starting on lesson uh, one, our lesson 11 start one file, first thing I want to take a look at before I get too far into the actual like gradients and modifying and everything is where you're going to find them. So if you go under your window menu and then down to gradient, It'll pop open a little side window here. That's where you're going to see and what you're using to kind of control how your gradients look. So you can see inside here, there's linear gradients, there's radial gradients, and then there's these freeform gradients. We'll work with all three. And then you'll also notice that gradients can be applied to fills or strokes. There isn't a whole ton as far as options, but keep in mind there is a gradient tool. And you can find that along your tool panel on the left-hand side. It just looks like this. So what that'll let you do is kind of one of two ways of working with this. And we'll kind of look at both of those and kind of how you can apply them and customize the work that you're going to be adjusting today. So first thing I want to take a look at is applying gradients onto a fill. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at kind of how we can take an object and fill it with something. So what we've got is this background box here. I'm going to click on this first. You can see right now it's just kind of this tan color. What I want to do is I want to kind of create almost like a skyline effect to this. So when I select it, there isn't any sort of gradient. It's just a solid color. I can tell by clicking up here. It just shows that solid color. Now notice you probably have seen these before. There's some existing pre-saved gradients that you can apply, white to black, orange to yellow, fading sky one. But what I want to do is I'm going to apply a completely custom gradient here. So with this selected, I'm going to go over my gradient panel and I'm just going to click on this gradient box here to activate it. Now, what I did is I activated a linear gradient. There's tons that I can control with it, but keep in mind that I also can do radial gradients and I can do these freeform gradients where it kind of applies colors in different boxes. We'll play around with that one later. I want to start off with a linear gradient. Now, what it does is it gives me this kind of like little box here in the slider. And there's a couple of ways I can do this. I can kind of play around with this thing or I can control it right from this gradient panel here. So say that I wanted this to be at like a perfect 90 degrees because I'm gonna make this look like it's gonna be the sky kind of fading from the, the ground to blue up top. It gives me the black to white as a default. And then I can also control where the gradient breaks, where it slides, my positioning, all that kind of stuff from this tool here. But what I wanna look at first is how I can control my color. So right now I've got this little gradient slider. And if I click and drag, it controls how denser, how much color is applied in the gradient. I've also got this little diamond in the middle. That diamond can control how the gradient breaks. So what I want to do is I want my black, I don't want that to be black, I want this to be like blue sky. So I'm going to actually double click right on this gradient slider and it's going to pop open a couple different ways of color mixing. So if I wanted to do like a slider, if I wanted to work out of swatches, or if I wanted to sample something. But what I'm going to do is because I have all these kind of nice ones pre-built for me, I'm going to grab this light blue. I'm going to use that as my sky. And then here, I'll double click this one. And I've got kind of this peachish color. I'm going to use that for the ground. And now it just defaults where everything kind of just sits in the middle. One color to the extreme to the next. I'm going to play with this. I'm going to slide this back a little bit. I want a little bit more sky. I want that blue to really sit nice and high up there because I'm going to blend in some clouds and kind of do some other stuff with that as we get to it. Now, once I'm happy with this, I can also save gradients as swatches. If I jump back in my swatches panel, I can click on this and drag it down right in here. And just like that, it applies that as a gradient swatch. So swatches aren't just solid colors. They're also those blends from gradients as well. Now, next thing I want to take a look at doing now that I've got that in place is I want to take a look at what it looks like adding a, a, a gradient onto a stroke. So if you take a look, kind of this big hot dog bun up here that's mounted on top of this truck, I'm going to click right on this. And this isn't an object. This is actually just a stroke. So you can see it's like big and yellow. It's really thick. It's got rounded edges. So rather than kind of controlling that with a solid color, what I'm going to do is I'm going to control that with a gradient. Now notice here, the fill is empty. The stroke 
is active. So I'm going to click on this and that applies my sky blue sky kind of look that I wanted. I don't want that. What I want to do is I want to change that. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my angle I'm going to set it to 90 degrees and then I'm going to play with my colors so they kind of blend off. And I'm going to go from like a dark orange to like a lighter orange. So what I'll do is I'll click on this gradient slider. This is the bottom one. And I'm going to grab maybe something like, I don't know, let's start with this one. And that blue, I don't want it to be blue. Obviously, I want it to kind of have like a little bit more of like a, a lighter, almost like yellowish color. So that's okay, but I don't really like how it's blending out. Now, another thing I can do is I'm not just stuck with these two colors. I can add in multiple colors in any gradient along the slider. So if I click in between the two, it'll allow me to add a third color in. So maybe I want to blend in something a little bit more intense, maybe this reddish color. Maybe I'll slide it back a little bit and blend it off. And now I got a much more kind of interesting, more dynamic looking gradient. It kind of gives me like a lighter color, a darker, a lighter, it kind of gives me a little bit more of that illusion of depth. And that's really the idea is when you're working with gradients, you want to kind of be able to use those to add depth to your artwork. And you can see kind of from before to after, it really is doing a nice job of that. So I think so far it's looking pretty good. What we haven't looked at yet is this radial gradient. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to grab this and we're going to try and make this thing kind of like look like the sun in the background. So what I'm going to do is first select the object. Now I want to apply a color to it. So I'm going to hit this radial gradient and I accidentally applied it to the stroke. I don't want anything on the stroke. I'm going to set that stroke to none. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to set this to the foreground. On this foreground, that's where I want to apply this color to. Now what I think I'm going to end up doing with this thing is kind of giving it like a little bit more of a a reddish look to so I think I'll do is I'll pull this yellow out of here and I can click and drag away to pull that out and I can kind of blend this in either direction so maybe I want to go slide this one here I can click and drag down I can click and slide these around and reset how that gradient kind of looks in there and I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can really see what I'm doing here now the other thing I can do is I can play with my gradients location so with that object selected I'm going to grab this gradient tool and now from here, I can kind of play around with things. I can adjust where this is sitting. So if I wanted to hover here, if I want to play with how much or how little it gets, I can also hover over these things and I can play with the sizing of it. So if I wanted to maybe oval it out a little bit, if I want to go bigger or smaller, and if I hover just outside of the right here, I can even rotate this in so I can kind of control that angle and how that gradient breaks and how that looks. So now I'm going to just kind of position it out a little bit more. Maybe I'll grab this one. I'll just kind of squash it in a little bit. And then when I'm done, I click away to deselect. And I've got kind of a little bit more dynamic looking radial gradient. <clears throat> now we've seen radial gradients. Next thing we're going to take a look at is applying a gradient across this cloud. I want to take a look at kind of playing with opacity and kind of fading with gradients. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this object here. I'm going to apply linear gradient to it. I'm going to go into this fading sky one. It's a pre-built gradient. Notice I have a stroke on this. I'm going to turn that stroke off. I'm going to make sure that's set to none. And now notice that with a color, I can not just not only set what the color is, I can set how opaque it is. So here, if I want to set it down to maybe like a faded version, and maybe I'll grab my gradient tool here, and I'll play around with to the right side, kind of my adjusting my line how big it is, where my gradient breaks. And then kind of fading these things through. Now this cloud, it shouldn't be blue. It should be fading into a blue background. Now that's one of the things about gradients. I don't want to necessarily fade from one color into another. I like to fade from one color into a slightly similar color or really more subtle work with it. When color modes are a little bit closer, so like a yellowish orange to an orange to a red, they tend to blend nicer. When you're blending, very different colors you get kind of these goofy kind of ugly gradients so because this is supposed to be a cloud clouds aren't blue clouds are white i can play with my break a little bit here maybe i don't need this one quite so much and then i can kind of control using this gradient tool where i want it to sit or if i just want to completely redraw it all together i can just click and drag and drop back up and now here Maybe that blue isn't quite right. It isn't quite that sky blue from the background. So now I can kind of play with that and adjust it. Maybe I'll rotate it a little bit more to kind of get a little bit more of that effect. I'll click right on the slider to kind of control how it breaks. And when I click away to deselect, now I'm doing a little bit more with fading and kind of and making that a little bit more subtle. 
Here, my opacity is at 30%. Maybe I'll bring it down to 10%. Maybe I really want this to fade. Maybe this should not be at a full 100%. Maybe I'll bring this down to like 90 and kind of blend it out a little bit more. But again, now I can use that opacity to kind of create a little bit more of a subtle effect. And to really see this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy paste this object. And you can kind of see as you stack multiples on top of each other, then you can really see that effect starting to work, how I can kind of see them through each other. So that's the idea of working with transparency on your gradients. It's the same idea. It's still applying color. It's just adding a little bit more of that kind of blend to it. Now, next thing, and this is definitely my favorite of all the gradient tools, there's a ton of applications for this thing, is the freeform gradient. Freeform gradient is really cool because it allows you to apply multiple kind of colors and styles to a single object and really auto blends them out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this blue truck and I'm going to click on my freeform gradient right here. And what freeform gradient does is it just automatically kind of generates a color palette for you and it throws these little circles here. Now take a look at what happens when I start moving these circles. It changes how it interacts with the lighting and the color based on where those other points are. So maybe I want it a little bit darker on the bottom of the truck. Maybe I want another point. I can click again and add another. Maybe I want to reposition this one. So now what it's going to let me do is reposition these points. Now, again, I'm not stuck with these points. If I double click inside that circle, now it's going to let me select a color. So maybe I want to go a little bit more bright, use some of those colors that I use, like in my hot dog, to kind of create a little bit more of that consistent color. Maybe towards the front, we'll go a little bit more of that red. So I'll grab that. I'm going to grab this one. It's kind of a little bit more intense. Got that black down here. And now as I drag these things around, it's going to auto blend them based off those other points. So you get some really, really cool effects with this. And if I don't want one, I can just highlight it, hit delete, and it'll delete it right out of there. So if I have too many or I'm not happy with how something's looking, so maybe here, like, I don't think this black might be a little too intense down here. I think I'm going to maybe switch this to maybe like a deep red. Yeah, I think that blends up nicely with that black in the background. So that's how the freeform gradient tool works. Really, really simple. This is also a great tool if you're trying to like, like you're gonna get to a point where we'll, we'll do something like a self-portrait. Great way of recreating skin tones. And again, when you keep colors that are kind of similar to each other, similar color areas, um, they blend out almost seamlessly. So that's something you want to keep in mind moving forward. But again, super powerful tool, really, really helpful when it comes to building and creating a lot more depth to your art. So you can see already like a little bit of working with opacity. A little bit of kind of stacking multiple colors that are, are close to each other to create a little bit of that depth. This is starting to look a lot more dynamic than when we started. Now, next thing we're going to take a look at is blending. And what we're going to do is we're going to work with these blended objects here. What I've got are these two stars and kind of these two shapes. What I want to do is I want to blend them into one another. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to locate where my blend tool is. You can see I can morph shapes and colors between two or more objects. So I can kind of blend these from one to the next. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to grab my selection tool. I'm going to click and highlight on my two stars because I need to make sure I have two objects active. And I'll grab my blend tool. So I'm going to click on the little one and then click on the big one. And just like that, it automatically blends them together into one big shape. Now, I don't have to make this look like a 3D effect. I can actually see the, st the stars in steps. So rather than doing it that way, what I'm going to do is I want to see those things in steps. So I'm going to go to my object, down to blend, and then I have these blend options. So again, object, blend, blend options. I can control how this thing blends out. Right now it's just smooth color, but I can specify the number of steps. So instead of 145 steps, tons of them, let's jump this down. Let's go to like maybe nine. I'll click OK. And now it's not just blending the spacing. Take a look at how it's blending off the color from that red to that yellow. Now I like how this looks, but I want to put a little curve into it because I'm going to kind of have it sit down here, kind of like a 3D effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here, scale, shear, and reshape. I'm going to reshape this line. So what I'm going to do is with that reshape, where the, that's the reshape tool. I want to make sure I have it active. I'm going to click on my selection tool and select the art. Come back to my reshape tool. I'm going to click on that line. And now I can kind of bend this up. I can also, with my direct select tool, stretch that line out a little bit more. So maybe I want to pull this apart a little bit or tighten it up or adjust my curve. It still will act as a single object. And then what I can do is drop it right there and kind of get that 3D looking effect on it. And when I'm done, I'll click away to deselect and I'm happy with how that looks. Again, same idea works here. This is just another sample. Like if we wanted to blend off colors, I'll select the objects, go from little to big, and you can see it gives me a really nice smooth blend here. If I go in because I have this set of smooth color and I stretch it out, it just stretches that blend. 
Again, if I go back in with my curvature tool or my reshape tool, I can reshape the line. It reshapes it and it still maintains that nice smooth blend of colors. So if you do have two shapes that you kind of want to morph into each other, this is definitely the, the tool to be using. All right, so now that we've seen the blend tool and kind of how to modify these things, next thing I want to take a look at is how we can go in and start playing around with creating patterns. And that's going to be on that other file, that lesson 11 start two right here. So what we've got is basically the same art, same stuff that we've created on the other one. But what I want to do here is I want to apply a pattern. So instead of just the logo, I want it to be covered in the logo. Now, here's our logo. It's right here. And thankfully, creating patterns is really simple in Illustrator because there's a tool built right in for it. So all I need to do to activate the tool is select the art that I want to turn into a pattern. So once I have the art selected, just click and drag over all of it. I'm going to go up to Object and then all the way down to Pattern here. And there's this Pattern Make command. So I'll click Make. And just like that, OK, cool. It's been added to the Swatches panel. So it's already going to add it right in there for us. And here it is. Now, we can control how this pattern looks. Now, if I select something inside of here, notice that it adjusts it automatically to all of them. But I don't want to do that. What I want to do is I want to play it, pay attention to kind of how this grid looks. I don't want it to just be like a, 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 a one by one or two by two or four by four. I kind of want to have like a stagger to it. So underneath my tile type, I can brick this thing by rows or columns. I don't really like that as much. Let's take a look at hexing it. And hexing by columns kind of gives me a little bit more of that tighter pattern, really kind of gives me that idea of how it's going to look. And I'm really happy with this. So I'm going to just give this thing a name. Let's call this Frank's. It is now saved in here for however it even says Franks. So I'll close this and I'm going to hit my done button up at up top here. And now it's taken this and it saved it and stored it right here inside my swatches. So what I want to do is I want to apply this to a truck. So if I click on it, there we go. It applies it on. Now, rather than do that, what I actually want to do is I want to apply this. And because there's a transparency behind this, let's go ahead and make this truck yellow. And I'm going to go into my properties. And notice under my appearance, I have one fill. I want to add another fill. You can actually stack multiple fills and multiple strokes on any object. So on this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this three little dots and see my appearance window. Now on the bottom of my appearance window, I'm going to go in and if I select fill, I can actually click this plus button and I can make a new fill. So on this new fill, I'm going to fill it with that pattern. So now it's going to take that pattern and apply it against a new color in that background. So I can kind of stack those multiples. Now the order you do this in is important. If you don't have these stacked correctly, you won't see it because now this fill is hidden behind that solid color. So I do want to make sure that I have my fills stacked just like you would in Photoshop with layers and just like we've done before with the bring to front, send to back kind of idea. We've got to make sure that this fill is at the top of this appearance panel in order to see it against that. So that's it as far as making patterns and applying them. Super straightforward, really simple stuff, but it gives you a ton of flexibility with your art. Really kind of turns into some nice looking pieces. I love the depth that it gives these things. And as we kind of move on through different projects and different pieces, you'll see that the applications for this really do help kind of give your, your art a lot more life. So next session, we're going to be taking a look at working with brushes and we'll actually be creating a self-portrait. And this is going to be a great tool to help you with that. So I'll see you guys at the next session.